This segment talks about a botched raid from the community safety team. The safety team that was supposed to build, help build relationships with communities. They were going to do community work for some of the time, and they were going to do enforcement the other, the regular police activities. And they were going to build these relationships. This comes after the Anjanette Young raid and after the department said, we're going to reform all these policies and we're going to do this for raids and we don't need any ordinances and it's all about policy and we're really going to do it this time. So this is a seven minute segment from report from David Savini and CBS2. But remember, this is post Anjanette Young's raid making headlines in that video about how awful the mayor felt and how awful David Brown felt and how awful all these people felt. Right? So think about that as you're watching this report. Reforms to the way officers get and obtain search warrants. Yeah, it was a great show, great speech. But as CBS2 investigator Dave Savini reveals, it seems the raid teams didn't get the message. They treated us like we were below them. Any individuals found within a location where a search warrant is executed must be treated with dignity and respect. The mayor's pledge. Do you feel like they should have treated your family with more respect? Yeah. And the police superintendent's vow. So the real question you're asking is if treating someone with respect gets in the way of doing our job. And the answer is no. Promises of reform made after the CBS2 investigators exposed dozens of bad raids on innocent families over the last three years. We are going to get this right. That was March 3rd. But just 11 days later. I never got treated like that by anybody in my entire life. This happened. A raid team that we found violated Chicago police policy hits a home in Bridgeport with so much force the entire structure shakes. We're still in our pajamas, just lounging around. It was a Sunday morning and George Garcia's birthday. His wife Kimberly and their two children, 12-year-old Georgie and 3-year-old Cruzy, were excited to celebrate. And then what happens? All of a sudden I just hear my whole house shaking and a big bang. Videos from the Garcia's home security system show police pulling up, a team of officers with guns and a battering ram heading to the side door to break it down. Only problem? The search warrant they are holding was not properly approved. I just heard like boom, boom, boom. Even before that March 3rd news conference, Chicago police policy required a lieutenant or above verify and approve all search warrants. Now the city says it's an even higher rank, a deputy chief who must sign off on a warrant before a judge does. These are just some of the new pre-execution safeguards that must be followed before a search warrant can ever be presented to the state's attorney or to a court. But none of that happened in the Garcia raid. Armed with that warrant in question, police kept ramming the door. Garcia, worried it might fall on him, ran to a window to talk to police. So you were yelling out of a top window? Yes. Stop hitting the door. I will open it. And I said, hey guys, I'm trying to open the door for you guys. Hey guys! Guys, I'm trying to open the door! Open the door! Then they told him not to move. Stay right there. Let me stay right here. Make sure we sit here. No problem. No problem. Stay right there. They're breaking the door. Hey, no, come on. Hey, let me see. The door's already closed. <laughs> Once inside, the raid team headed to the second floor and burst into Garcia's apartment. What was the first thing you saw? A gun. Then they say they tried to get to their youngest child, Cruzy. And I'm just trying to get to my kid. Do you see it? I just play it over and over again. And they just put the gun to my head and told me to turn around. Which brings us to the city's next promise. Immediate changes to how vulnerable people, especially children, will be treated during raids. The guns were pointed at your brother and your mom. Yeah, and my dad. Right. Georgie Garcia says he and his little brother ended up in another room. Two children are screaming, you know, screaming for their parents. So the whole time you were put in that room, you couldn't get to your mom and dad. Yeah. And you were scared. I felt scared. 
I didn't want him to see me crying. You were trying to console your brother? I had to stay strong for him, so I oh, kept my emotions and just protected him. And then there's this. The city also promised to address one of its most widespread failures we uncovered during our multi-year investigation into wrong raids. Long before their news conference in March, it was CPD policy never to base a search warrant solely on the word of a confidential informant. But the Garcia warrant is based solely on the word of a confidential informant. There's no mention of any actual police work, no undercover drug buys, no surveillance, no verification at all that drugs were being sold out of the apartment before police burst in. Later, we see these images. The entire apartment ransacked, personal belongings and toys wrecked. They're not doing their job. That's just it. They're just using their own system however they want, however they see fit. The warrant only gave them the power to search Garcia's apartment on the second floor of this multi-unit building. But when they found nothing, they started to search the garage and other units too. It makes no sense. I was sleeping, not minding my own business. Officers searched the first floor where Michael Zastro was in bed. You can even hear the raid team talking about how it was someone else's place. And what's this, somebody else's apartment? Yeah. They pulled me out the room and then they started searching my whole room and the whole apartment. And this wasn't just any raid team. All of the officers on this raid belonged to police superintendent David Brown's newly created community safety team. Formed last year during the height of unrest and widespread calls for reform as a way to not only fight crime, but to improve trust between police and the public. They were just laughing the whole time like it was funny, like, it was, like this was some kind of sick joke to them. Then came the final humiliation. They went through your underwear. Mm -hmm. And not just through it, like they were holding it. And showing it. Yeah, like putting it up and then like giving me looks and like smirking. But the hardest part of the raid, they say, is what it did to the children, especially Cruzy. Does he talk about seeing the guns? Yeah. He keeps on saying, uh, monsters, and he goes like this. He's like, monsters, monsters. In that moment, while you're handcuffed and you couldn't put your arms around your kids, what did that do to you? They get all emotional and you can't do nothing. You can't comfort them. You can't give them a hug. You can't tell mommy's going to be okay because you don't know what's happening. And then w when they left, did they say, I'm, we're sorry? No, they nothing. said happy Just... birthday. And we asked them what happens with the doors. And they said, he's in construction. He can figure it out they himself. Said... The officer who got the warrant and the sergeant in charge of the raid have a combined 86 disciplinary complaint investigations, four of them sustained, two apiece. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability is now investigating what happened during the Garcia raid. Dave Savini, CBS2 Investigators. In a written statement tonight, Chicago police say they, quote, immediately referred this incident to Copa, but a source familiar with the raid tells us CPD only brought it to Copa's attention after we started asking questions and submitting public records requests. Dave has, of course, done extensive reporting on the pattern of botched raids by Chicago police over the last several years. To see this award-winning body of work that's finally leading to promises of reform, visit CBS chicago.com slash unwarranted this is why this is a perfect example of why we need another perfect example but probably the most perfect we need laws not more police department policies i'm all for putting the best policies in place possible but we need laws right we need laws. Make it felonies. Make it criminal acts for police to have such an epic, unprecedented failure. And there to be no repercussions. How are there no repercussions from this? And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is David Brown's team. He owns them. He owns what they do. This is old school type policing. What were they chasing, ladies and gentlemen? Were they chasing massive amounts of violence? Were they going after a crew that was known to be violent? No, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. They were tracing, they were chasing a, a drug dealer. They were tracing, chasing drugs. Not violence, drugs. And not drugs necessarily connected to violence. Just drugs. Some guy they busted for buying from them or selling from them or possession went to them and said, hey, I know someone. I can give you someone. Let me give you this house. 
do we really want our police departments, and here in Chicago, knocking down doors like this over drug sales, not connected to violence, not a violent crew? Is this what we want? Because this is what we're getting. This is not new, st new style policing. This is old school, retrograde, 1970s, 1960s, 1980s policing, 1990s policing. There is nothing new here. This is as old as the day is young. There's nothing new here, inventive, innovative. You can bet that couple told everyone on their block and everyone they know in that community and all their friends and family about what happened. That community team that David Brown put together, it's not doing any good. If that's the type of raids they're doing, forget about it. It's a joke. Maybe another reason why David Brown should go. There's nothing new to that. We don't need large 100-man, 200-man, 300-person units chasing drugs. We don't need it. It's worthless. Chase a violent crew? All for it. That's something we could talk about. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. This, these types of things are generally about producing numbers, ladies and gentlemen. That's what it's about. It's a producing numbers. We got this many drugs. We confiscated this many drugs. Got this many weapons. We got all of this. We have made so many arrests. It's about numbers production. It's about showing activity and having, getting little stars by your name up on the board or in the system. That's all this is. This is not making Chicago any safer. It isn't. Those people that buy the drugs from those people or whoever they thought they're buying drugs from, they probably got lied to, excuse me, by the informant. You think they're not getting their drugs somewhere else even if their family did sell drugs? They're not going to get their drugs somewhere else? Of course they are. It's a joke. If that family, if those drug sellers or whoever they were going after we're linked to serious on the street, in the real world violence, then we can have a discussion. Anything less, this is about numbers and BS. This is total BS under David Brown, under Lori Lightfoot. They're in charge. Nothing has changed. It's retrograde policing. Congratulations, Mayor Lightfoot, head of the Police Accountability Task Force, president of the Chicago Police Board, head of the Office of Professional Standards. Retrograde policing. 730 days in, Mayor, and this is still what the crap your, your police department's doing. What change? What is different than what this policing was done under Rahm, was done under Daly, was done under Jane Byrne, was done under Hild Washington, and all the people that came before him, even old man Daly. The, nothing's changed, Mayor. Why did we elect you if this is what we're getting? fail hashtag massive 730 day fail and there's no reason nothing she has done to date makes me think anything else anything new is going to change 